going on, Dolph fans? It is your boy, Dylan, and I am here to give you some updates to this whole, um, you know, it's kind of just a, a massive debacle, honestly. Um, but, you know, what do you expect from the Dolphins? Always got to be in the mix or at the center of some kind of drama, right? So, obviously, um, <clears throat> in this case, I'm talking about the whole Brian Flores situation with him suing the NFL and multiple teams, including naming the Dolphins in some stuff, which when it comes to the Dolphins, it's primarily based around the tampering. Although Brian Flores has said um, in some of his you know media appearances and in the lawsuit that it's the hiring and firing practices, and he feels as if he got fired from the Dolphins because he refused to tank, which, again, I don't believe at all, not even close, because, and, you know, I didn't even, I didn't even think to make this point because my initial thought on it was, yeah, right, dude, you fucking... Now, I don't have any proof that he was paid for losing games, but you clearly adopted and accepted the tanking philosophy when you were hired here. And there's not a chance in hell that Steven Ross and Chris Greer and them didn't talk about it when they initially interviewed Brian Flores the first time around. So he had to have known going into it that that was going to be the plan. And so, and then when you look at his actions, the things that he did after the fact, by his own admission, he helped to design the team and had a hand in every single transaction, right, in the 2019 season, thereby putting a uh, competitive lacking product on the field. Um, right. I mean, you fielded a, a high school team, a fucking expansion team, college team, whatever. Like it wasn't even comparable. Right. So you when you and then again, you can go back and watch videos from 2019 that I made. There are a number of examples throughout the entire thing of him during games, putting us in position to lose, if not outright trying to lose. Right. Like so, I mean, there is so much evidence and so that was my initial thing. But but the thing I didn't think about was, well, then why did you wait three fucking years to come out about this? Like, really? Again, now I said I actually wouldn't be surprised at all if Stephen Ross did offer him that. Now, I doubt there would be any actual paper trail of that because I don't think I don't think they'd be sending emails about it. It would be a backroom conversation with Brian Flores, Stephen Ross, Chris Greer, probably that's about it. And they would discuss the terms in person without any kind of recordings or anything to, to implicate them in that. If that did happen. So it's going to be hard to prove, bro. And we're going to get into this. Let me go ahead now and let me go ahead now and actually pop over because there's a couple articles that I want to go through and... I'm just going to say this, bro. Unless Brian Flores has some, like, massively concrete, hardcore evidence, he's going to get fucking buried in this situation. Um, because, I mean, all of these teams, first of all, it's all super hard to prove just fucking... I mean, it's just super hard to fucking prove all of it, bro. And these teams are now starting to come out with all of this, you know like data and paperwork and, and, you know, they're giving, uh, detailed descriptions and time frames and stuff. And like, I, I don't know, bro. Look, I've said it. I don't, I, I never wanted Brian Flores as our head coach. I don't really like him. I mean, I don't know him personally, but what I've seen from him, I don't really like how he conducts himself as a person. He's constantly lying. He's, you know, he clearly did shady shit when he was here with the Dolphins. So, like, this this dude going around saying, oh, I care about truth and integrity and shit like that. Get the fuck out of here, bro. Like, the things that you did while you were here, the way you treated a lot of players, including players of color, like, get the fuck out of here, bro. You don't have any leg to stand on. So, but while that's all true, I also believe that the claims of racism in the hiring process that he's making are true. I just don't think that he has any legit 
first-hand experience and evidence and data to go off of. It doesn't seem like it, at least not yet. And those texts from Belichick are not confirmation of anything being definitive or any you know, anything like that. <clears throat> you know, it says that it says that Bill, Bill Belichick thinks that Brian Dabble is getting the job. It seems like they had him as their guy. But there's nothing to confirm that there was any predetermined decision, right? So, like, that's the best he's got right now. And they said that, you know, they have witnesses, but there's been other, you know, it's kind of changed a little bit that it's, you know, there are people around the building heard that that was the case. Like, I don't know, bro. This dude needs to come with, like, some serious hardcore evidence if he's going to have any chance. Because despite my personal feelings for him or my feelings for him as a coach, because I, like, I didn't like him really all that much as a coach, uh, certainly not as a head coach. At best, he's a, a, a defensive coordinator. Um, you know, but despite those things, if he's got a legitimate claim of, of racist experience, uh, you know, an experience of racist behavior against him during these process processes, then processes, then I'm all for getting behind him. Right. But like, you know, and people have compared him to Colin Kaepernick and, you know, they fucking self-proclaimed him as Rosa Parks of the NFL, which I think is a little outlandish, if I'm being honest, because he has not the things that Rosa Parks went through ha, are not even comparable to the experiences Brian Flores had when being interviewed for jobs or when it comes to him being fired as the head coach, like at least from what we can tell now, because he hasn't provided any legit evidence. So it's going to be hard for him. He's going to get crushed if he doesn't do it. So let's start getting through this. So <clears throat> this is the first one because it has, you know, details on the lawsuit. I'm not going to read absolutely everything because some of it we've already gone over. But uh, this does have uh, comments from the Giants and stuff like that. So I do want to do want to give you all of this. So the New York Giants released a statement denying the allegations brought forth in the lawsuit filed by Flores. Flores has raised serious issues in filing of his complaint. Team said in his statement. Uh, let's hear. Let's just actually pull up the actual statement. So this will take me over to Twitter. Let's take a look at this. So this is what the Giants had to say. Brian Flores has raised some serious issues in filing of his complaint. The specific claims against the Giants and Mr. Flores' allegations about the legitimacy of his candidacy for our head coach position are disturbing and simply false. After we, and, But I told you guys, though, too, they're going to fucking band together. He's going to have to go up against... Look, bro, he's... I mean, the fight that he has taken on, it's... Unless he's got legit hardcore evidence, he's a fucking fool and a clown for doing it because he's going to get buried, bro. He is screwing himself over when it comes to getting a job in the NFL. Now, he's still technically in the running for a couple jobs and still technically a finalist for the Texans job. But my guess is they're probably just saying that and then they'll, you know... So that way they can be like, hey, man, we had him in the running as a finalist all the way through. And we just decided, hey, someone else is better. And Brian Flores even said, which I think is in one of these, um, they have the right to decide on who they think is the better. And it's hard to prove unless you have some kind of like admission that, you know, they're choosing this white coach over a black coach because of the skin color. It's super difficult to, to prove the other person's intent. You know what I'm saying? So it's super difficult to prove for Brian Flores that, you know, they intended to hire this guy because he's white unless you have actual evidence of that, right? So anyway, um, it's a fucking mess, bro. Anyway, and they're going to band together, bro. So he's going to have to – he's taking on the NFL – as a multi-trillion dollar international organization and their band of lawyers, he's taking on the Broncos, the Dolphins, the Giants, three organizations that are all worth millions, if not billions of dollars, and their lawyers. Then he's also taking on billionaire owners and their lawyers. Mara, Ross, right? Like, I mean, this dude... 
look, bro, again, like, I'm all about bucking the establishment, but you are crazy if you think you're going to be able to win against that kind of power, the amount of resources and stuff that they have, if you don't come with some hardcore shit, bro. And so far, he ain't cut his, his argument has been pretty weak. Um, anyway, let's get through this because I... You guys already basically know how I feel, but after we interviewed six exceptional and diverse candidates, decision on who and uh, on who we would hire as head coach was made on the evening of January 28th, one day after Mr. Flores spent an entire day in our offices going through his second interview for the position, meeting with ownership and other staff members and receiving a tour of our facility. See the itinerary below, which we will throw in in just a minute. Real quick, side note though, or part of this. And that's what I was saying about the Belichick. None of that confirms any decision made prior to the fucking very end of it, right? When um, on Janu the evening of January 28th, nothing confirms that they made a decision before interviewing Brian Flores. That da Now, maybe Dabble was their top target. Okay, fine, but there's nothing to say that they actually decided on him and all of the rest of the candidates. But even so, some of those other candidates were white. So maybe those candidates didn't have a chance either because, it, like, let's say they did decide on Dabble, right? The other six candidates, none of them had a chance then. Some of those guys were white. So, like, how do you argue this? It, you have to have immense, and those Belichick texts are not enough to corroborate this, and it doesn't it doesn't definitively say or even suggest really that there was a, a decision made prior to, and that it had anything to do with race, even if it even if they did, you know, even if they had their hearts set on Dabble from Jump Street, and they kind of went into it knowing that, right? Like, I mean, it's super, anyway, there's additional concrete and objective evidence to substantiate we did not make our decision until the evening of the 28th. The allegation the Giants' decision has been made prior to Friday evening, January 28th, is false, and to base that allegation on a text exchange with Bill Belichick in which he ultimately states that he thinks, and that, it, right, Brian Dabble would get the job is irresponsible, right, and that's part of why it doesn't substantiate shit, because he said, I think, right, I mean, to be fair, it said the first part says, it, you know, it looks like you landed the job or something. I'm paraphrasing a little bit, but it looks like you landed the job. Congratulations. Right. But that's still not a, hey, you're 100 percent getting the job. And they decided on it before doing any interviews with any of these other candidates. And it's because the dude's white fucked the black candidates. Now, I agree. The Rooney rule doesn't do enough. A lot of things need to change. But if he's taking on the, if he wants to be the face of this, this whole, you know, movement, and if he wants to also claim discriminatory practices against him, you got to come with fire, bro. Anyway, the text exchange occurred the day before Coach Dabble's in-person interview even took place. Giants ownership would never hire a head coach based on only a 20-minute Zoom interview, which is all that Mr. Dabble had at that point. Continuing on, in addition, Mr. Belichick does not speak for and has no affiliation with the Giants. Mr. Belichick's text exchange provides no insight into what actually transpired during our head coaching search. It has been well documented how well research and due diligence we did on Mr. Flores as it related to his candidacy. John Mara called Mr. Flores two days after he was dismissed in Miami. Mr. Mara expressed to Mr. Flores in that January 12 call that we once are that once we had our new general manager in place, we would begin the process of hiring our head coach and we wanted to meet with Flores because we considered him a serious candidate for the position. Mr. Mara and Mr. Flores then had their first formal conversations in a 25 to 30 minute Zoom call on January 18th at Mr. Flores' request to further discuss his candidacy. In between those initial conversations, bro, he's gonna get buried, man. And Mr. Flores' in-person interview on January 27th and nothing's gonna to change he's gonna and ultimately honestly real quick i'm sorry what it could actually be a detriment to the progress of african americans in the league because now he's making i mean look if it look you know my stance on the owners i think on some level they probably are all racist on some level to varying degrees 
But if they already have the and and I also admit that it's very possible that a lot of these people go in with preconceived notions into these into these hiring processes processes. But if you think that, um, it, I mean, it's hard to imagine that you could think they would change their ways now since most of them are old as fuck. And they're part of helping to build these establishments and institutions and, and, and operate in the, in the ways that they have, right? So why do you think they're going to change? But if you go into this and then if the only thing that ends up happening is Brian Flores gets buried and looks like a fucking clown and a joke, it could set them back. It could set African-Americans back and minorities back even further because then you're going to have a mainstream headline figure that proved to fucking potentially, because we have to wait and see how it plays out, but right now it's not looking good, that potentially proves to be false and making false accusations for whatever reason, right? And it, it's, it won't be good. It won't make, you know, it right or wrong. And obviously I think the stereotyping, stereotyping of, you know, an entire race based off of one person is wrong, but, you know... I mean, it's going to be in recent memory. So what happens the next cycle for black candidates if Brian Flores ends up looking like a clown throughout all this? So it could actually end up being a major detriment to the to the to the progress of African-Americans in this field, man. Um, and just in general, just like on the flip side, if he gets if he does have hardcore evidence and proves all this, it could. It, I mean, I, I kind of doubt it, but. There is a potential for it to make massive change in the sport and, you know, in the world in general, right? But if it fails, it has the opposite effect and it could be a huge detriment. This included a dinner with our newly hired general manager, general manager, general manager, Joe Schoen, the night before Mr. Flores' in-person interview. The consensus from within the Giants organization after this dinner remained that Mr. Flores was an outstanding candidate and we looked forward to sitting down with him in person the next day. Our hiring process and most certainly our consideration of Mr. Flores was serious and genuine. We are disappointed to learn that Mr. Flores was under the mistaken impression the job had already been awarded. In a CBS interview yesterday, Mr. Flores was asked if clubs have the right to hire the person they think is the best qualified for the job or the person they feel is right for them. Mr. Flores responded, they do. That's very reasonable to me. I'm telling, and look, he's not a very good speaker, bro. Like, he's just not. And... He doesn't know what to say, and a lot of his answers aren't fucking answers, bro. Like, how long did we see that? For three years with the Dolphins. He will give you an answer that is literally not an answer to the question. And so many of those answers, I mean, look at the video I did of his ESPN interview. It's just, he's going to bury himself, dude. Uh, th that is exactly what we did. We hired Brian Dabble as our head coach at the conclusion of an open and thorough interview process. No decision was made and no job offer was extended until the evening of January 28th, a full day after Mr. Flores' in-person interview and day-long visit to the Giants. And then here's the interview, Brian Flores' interview. So he was apparently there from 8.45 a.m. till 3.30 with a number of people in the organization. And so now... If Brian Flores does have any, I mean, they're separate issues. The, the tampering thing is different. But, I mean, bro, he's, look, they're going to have, the Giants alone are going to have Joe Schoen, John Mara, Chris Mara, Steve Tisch, uh, Tim McDonnell, Pat Hanlon, Jen Escalante, Dion Dargan, Ronnie Barnes, Jesse Armstead, Allison Stang, Stangeby, Stangby, Pete Gwelly. All of these guys, just from the Giants organization, are going to be able to, t if this goes to court and shit, will testify and be like, yeah, we were here, we were here, we were here, we did this, we did this, we loved it, we had a good time, we had a good conversation, etc., etc. 8.45, arrival at Quest, 9 a.m., meet with John Mara, Chris Mara, Steve Tisch, Joe Schoen, and high-ranking officials, the fucking owner and the GM, bro, like, come on, 12 p.m., lunch and facility tour, 1 p.m., I don't know what the point of this was, but he talked to three more people. 145, talked to two more people. 230, talked to two more people. 330, talked with the motherfucking GM some more. Like, I'm telling you, bro, this dude is going to get himself fucking buried because he's not, 
He's not coming with anything yet. Anyway, Dolphins owner Stephen Ross also responded, which I will actually take you to in just a minute. So we will pass by that really quick. I did want to also, and you know, it mentions the $100,000 per game, which we already know about. Uh, let's see. I, I am actually going to take you to Stephen Ross's, but for now, that's in another one. So let me go through this a little bit. Uh, la, la, la. Um, this is a little bit about his whatever. Let's see. Where is it? Where's the next thing? Because I want to give you the statement from the NFL because I don't think I've given you that yet. Here it is. So the statement, and the NFL and our clubs are deeply committed to ensuring equitable employment practices and continue to make progress in providing equitable opportunities throughout our organizations. Diversity is core to everything we do, and there are a few issues on which our clubs and our inter internal leadership team spend more time. We will defend against these claims, which are without merit. Um, I mean, so far they do look like they're without merit. Um, but Jesus fucking Christ, man. I mean, anyway. And then so here, the Broncos, this is the Broncos statement too. Let me go ahead and give you that as well. So the allegations from Brian Flores directed toward the Denver Broncos in today's court filing are blatantly false. I also have John Elway's statement. Our interview with Mr. Flores regarding our head coaching position began promptly at the scheduled time of 7.30 a.m. on January 5th, 2019 in a Providence, Rhode Island hotel. There were five Broncos executives present, so there's five more guys that are going to have testimonies, and they're all going to have the same fucking... They're all going to... Even if this is all fabricated from the corporate side and from these organizations, they're all going to be in lockstep with each other, bro. Um, uh, for the interview, which lasted approximately three and a half hours, the fully allotted time and concluded shortly before 11 a.m. Pages of detailed notes, analysis and evaluations from our interview demonstrate the depth of our conversation and sincere interest in Mr. Flores as a head coaching candidate. Our process was th thorough and fair to determine the most qualified candidate for our head coaching position. The Broncos will vigorously defend the integrity and values of our organization and its employees from such baseless and disparaging claims. And so, I'm telling you, bro, dude's going to get fucking buried. He's got a lot. <laughs> I mean, he's got a lot more he needs to come with if he's going to have any kind of a fucking chance in this and prove not to be just a fucking jackass. Uh, all right, Dolphin Steven Ross responds to Brian Flores' tanking tampering allegations. From Miami Dolphins head coach Brian Flores' class action lawsuit against the NFL and its 32 teams includes an allegation that Finns owner Steven Ross offered to pay him 100 k per loss during the 2019 season so the team could obtain better 2020 draft picks, or positioning rather. Flores also says the Ross that Ross wanted him to speak with a prominent under contract quarterback during the 2020 offseason in violation of the league's tampering rules. Ross offered this response to Flores' claims Wednesday calling them false, malicious, and defamatory. And so here are Ross's actual comments. So, statement from Dol uh, Dolphins owner Steven Ross. With regards to the allegations being made by Brian Flores, I'm a man of honor and integrity. And, I mean, I actually don't personally buy that, and he's obviously done some shady shit in the past with Harbaugh trying to get him the previous time, with Deshaun Watson, right? So, and that's why I wouldn't put it past Steven Ross to offer him 100k per loss, but to prove that is an entirely different thing, right? And you gotta come with the fucking hard-hitting evidence, man. So, and this this statement can stand unless you do, unless you if you don't prove him wrong. You gotta prove him wrong. But it look right now it's not looking good for Flores, bro. I take great personal exception to these malicious attacks, and the truth must be known. His allegations are false, malicious, and defamatory. We understand there are media reports stating that the NFL intends to investigate his claims, and we will cooperate fully. I welcome that investigation, and I am eager to defend my personal integrity and the integrity and the values of the entire Miami Dolphins organization from these baseless, unfair, and disparaging claims. Now, as you can see, a lot of these... Uh, they're pretty PC, a lot of these responses, to be fair, right? And they say some of the same thing, baseless, unfair, disparaging claims, talk about integrity, right? But I'm telling you, bro, they're going to, again, and I've said this, even if Brian Flores is somehow 
100% correct, although he's got a long way to go in proving it. And But if he does even get proven, he could still get buried because the good old boys club is going to band together, which they clearly are. But right now, it looks like they're more in the right than Brian Flores is. Anyway, Elway denies Flores' allegations surrounding Broncos' interview in 2019. Let's hear what Elway had to say. Denver Broncos president of football operations, John Elway, issued a statement Thursday denying allegations made against him and members of the front office by former Miami Dolphins coach Brian Flores. In a racial discrimination lawsuit filed Tuesday against the NFL and its teams, Flores said Elway and others in the front office showed up to a 2019 interview looking disheveled and over an hour late. Elway called the lawsuit false and defamatory in a statement following up a denial issued by the Broncos earlier this week, which we just went through. While I was not planning to respond publicly to the false and defamatory claims by Brian Flores, I could not be silent any longer with my character, integrity, and professionalism being attacked. I took Coach Flores very seriously as a candidate for our head coaching position in 2019 and enjoyed our three and a half hour interview with him. Along with the rest of our group, I was prepared, ready, and fully engaged during the entire interview as Brian shared his experience and vision for our team. It's unfortunate and shocking to learn for first... Uh, learned for the first time this week that Brian felt differently about our interview with him. For Brian to make an assumption about my appearance and state of mind early that morning was subjective. It is, because how do you prove that, right? Hurtful and just plain wrong. If I appeared disheveled as he claimed, it was because we had flown during middle of the night, immediately following another interview in Denver, which I'm sure they... If that's true, I'm sure they have records of it. They have, especially because there's going to be, there's also going to be um, flight logs because he said they, uh, where is it? Had flown during the middle of the night. There's going to be flight logs of that, right? So, and we're going to have a few hours sleep to meet the only window provided. I interviewed Brian in good faith, giving him the same consideration and opportunity as every other candidate for our head coaching position in 2019. So, Woo! Bro. And but see, and the thing is, and then yes, because people do go on to say that Broncos later later hired Vic Vangio, who is white. That's true. But then what happened to Brian Flores? He got hired by the Miami Dolphins. So, bro, he doesn't have much shit to stand on here. I gotta keep it real with you, and he's gonna have a really, really tough time sussing, you know, uh, um bro, I mean he's Look, again, if he's got hardcore evidence, even though I don't, you know, don't like him as a coach or, you know, as a person, I think he's proven to do some shady shit that I'm not cool with, you know, whatever we've talked about how he's treated Tua, et cetera, et cetera, right? So, you know, and by the way, again, just to be clear, it's not just Steven Ross and Chris Greer who are claiming that Brian Flores is a dickhead and is difficult to work with. Reporters have talked about it. Players have talked about it. Other coaches have talked about it. So, I mean, you know, he's just, anyway, he's got a long way to go into proving his side of these claims. And honestly, if I'm being real, I think the reality of the situation is, is Brian Flores is going to end up getting buried and this whole thing, he's going to end up just screwing himself over. And honestly, all that money he made over the past few seasons as a head coach, those millions of dollars, he could end up burning through that shit rapidly because of the legal fees and stuff that's going to come with this, bro. And he's, I mean, he's just, I look, I might not like him, but if he's got a claim and he's got legit proof and evidence, I'm willing to stand behind him, bro. But you got a long way to go into being able to prove all that. So, I mean, I think he's going to end up getting buried. The league, these owners, these ball clubs, they're obviously all going to band together. And he's going to get fucking buried. Nothing's going to change, which is a disappointment because the the root claims that he's making do exist in the NFL. He's just the worst guy to fucking lead that charge. He waited three years to come out about this. Like, so what are you doing for three years, bro? If you were really that, if it really bothered you, like I get so much hate because I stick to my morals and I'm in my ethics and I'm consistent about it no matter what, no matter what, bro. And I get shit on constantly for it. And I have in jobs that I've worked because I refuse to fucking... I refuse to play along with the status quo bullshit rules and I speak up when I see injustices. 
And that's one of the reasons why I haven't had success in my life. So if you were really that bothered by it, why did it take you three fucking years to come out and say something when, and not to mention after you had gotten fired and haven't been hired for a new job yet? Because all it does seem like is sour fucking grapes and it's a fucking mess. Anyway, I don't want to take any longer with this. That's, you know, a good 30 minutes. I just wanted to make sure to give you guys these updates. I wanted to make sure you guys had all these statements from the clubs and these different people, the NFL and stuff like that. So there you have it. Like I said, it's a giant mess. And unfortunately, now the Dolphins, unfortunately, are going to be embroiled in this. Although, you know, I know that there is some concern that at the end of the day, we could end up, you know, getting docked some picks if we do get proven to be, you know, guilty of the tampering. But, I mean, it's going to be super hard to prove. So while that would suck, I'm not really super worried about it because I think Brian Flores is going to get buried throughout all of this. And... I also agree that it would be a, like, surprising but pleasant twist of events if throughout this whole thing, obviously, Steen Ross would have to be found guilty, but if he was found guilty and forced to sell the team, then that would be a silver lining, but I'm not even, con I'm not even um, convinced that that's going to be the case, because most likely, even if he did get found guilty of tampering... They'd probably just give him a fine. They would dock, you know, a draft pick or two, which, you know, hurts the club and it hurts us as fans, but it doesn't really hurt him at the end of the day. Um, and that would probably be about it. So I just don't see this turning out well for Flores, although I also don't really see it being too much of an effect on the Dolphins at the end of the day, because I think Flores is going to have one hell of a time proving all this. So... But it's just a giant mess no matter what. And it's certainly going to carry into this offseason. And it could have already, if not will, have an effect on our head coach hiring process. Because it could, you know, this could have maybe affected Jim Harbaugh's decision into why he ended up um, going back to Michigan after the Vikings didn't give him um, uh, the job, right? So... You know, I mean, that was the Vikings' decision. They decided not to offer him a contract. But he could have then waited and see if the, the Dolphins' job would be appealing. But he went back to Michigan and said, I, I'm going to be your coach. So, you know, he took himself out of the running. Does Now, Mike McDaniel is scheduled to have a coaching uh, interview tomorrow, a second interview tomorrow. But does he end up pulling out? How does that work? I mean, is he thinking about all of this mess? Um you know, is he going to try and use it as leverage to get more concessions in his contract, right? A ton of guaranteed money. Is he like, there's, I don't know. It's just a fucking mess. It's obviously going to affect us to some degree, no matter what. But at the end of the day, I don't think it's going to come down to us getting doc draft picks. But I also don't think Steven Ross is going anywhere. I don't think he's going to end up selling the team, you know, even though I think he should. And I also think that his succession plan should be nullified and there should be an open bid at the very least. Uh, I don't think any of that's going to happen. I think the good old boys club is going to win. Whether they're right or wrong, I think they're going to win. And it's going to be, you know, we're just going to end up moving past this and on to the next thing and nothing's going to change, et cetera, et cetera. So there you have it. That's my thoughts. Those are the updates. And with that, I'm going to get out of here. Before I do, make sure you check out the Rave on Sports app, the new fan-driven sports app for all your sports, whether it be basketball, baseball, football, college, whatever you like, they got it and they are looking to enhance your game day experience with live play-by-play -play coverage, live chats with other fans and content creators like myself, while also providing you with an arena to dispute all of the terrible officiating so make sure you look for the links to that in the description box. And with that, I'm going to get out of here. Hope you guys appreciate my perspective. If you do, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you hit the bell if you want to get the alerts. Share my channel and videos with your friends and family. Leave your questions, comments, and concerns down in the comment section. Of course, as always, follow me on Twitter at Dylan Tartaro, as well as on Instagram at Dolphins underscore with underscore Dylan. And with that, I am out. I'll see you all soon. Fins up.
it.